Welcome back to Fudge Muppet, I'm Scott here with Michael and today we're talking about best slash fun builds. We want to talk about mm -hmm. some of the better ones first and so on. But we, this was... we got excited with the Necromancer video yeah. and I think we just have to talk all fun builds. The best builds to play in Skyrim from a fun perspective <laughs> and in the background we've got our Winter, <laughs> our Winter Sun mod video just to showcase a variety of characters but Perhaps not necessarily playstyles in that, so we'll talk about it. Because with Skyrim, you've got so many options, clearly. I mean, if you've looked at our, uh, our our builds list, there is like over hundreds of Skyrim builds. I got them can, both here, actually. That you can choose from. There are so many. And a lot of these are similar core playstyles, but differentiations on sort of like aesthetics uh -huh. and role-playing. There's 118 builds in our playlist we started back in 2013, which means in April next year, we're yeah. going to celebrate... 10 years of Fudge Muppet and 10 years of Skyrim builds, believe it or not. And then 114 videos in the Skyrim SE slash, you know, anniversary edition mm. builds playlist. So there is a lot of stuff there. And obviously the big differentiator is role-playing experience, yeah. which we'll also talk about, but also just some of the most fun play styles. So I don't know if we'll rank them, but how would you kick it off as, well, what is a fun character to you, well, Scott? Well, I think there's, it's hard to, it's hard to, Pin it down. I think a good place to start is like maybe sort of, I find these fun, but they're the best from the sort of what's going to give you the greatest experience. If, if I was to say to someone uh, who's never played Skyrim before, but they want to play Skyrim and get sort of like the most bang for buck, because just on a, a quick anecdote, like you can play some characters that might have a more limited amount of things to do because it's such a specific role playing angle. But if you want to go in and give someone a really like broad take, mm -hmm. It is a meme, but there is <laughs> the stealth, stealth there, there is the stealth archer because from a stealth archer point of view, it's very easy to then do Thieves Guild and Dark Brotherhood. They work perfectly for a stealth archer. But then also if you want to do go do companions or civil war or just sort of be it's very easy to convert into a combat archer and just sort of approach battles like that. Because you can just easily just underrated build that. I, honestly, mm. playing playing an archer that actually I know stealth archer is really fun, but playing one that doesn't, like an armored yeah. kind of like brigand with with a bow and you actually run in and you're like a sharpshooter just standing up in their face but like quickly shooting off shots and like just dropping people yeah it's and, pretty fun and it's also one of the more like overpowered things as well and, like and even the with the play style too though you get the like the zoom in the slow time obviously skyrim had finishes implemented so you get a lot of like you can get that cool arrow shot from far away mm. where it will follow the arrow and knock them off valheim towers and i think too it gives you that really it's easier to just sort of go into that sort of uh, dubious villain kind of type character. So when you've got your Dark Brotherhood and your Thieves Guild kind of stuff that you can do, but the big thing too is when you've got those sort of uh, morally questionable Daedric Prince quests or other kind of quests that have, uh, you know, some moral problems to them. But going through going through as sort of a, a darker side character, it just fits Stealth Archer Basically really well. an assassin. Yeah. And the other thing is it's really easy to just pair a build like that with a little bit of magic or a mm. little dagger as a, as, a, as a backup weapon. I think, you know, like obviously being able to use invisibility or being able to use frenzy from a distance and then come in and kind of shoot people down amidst the chaos that you've like created. Like pu a Puppet Master sort yeah. of Stealth Archer combo. Like if you throw a, a Puppet Master, we've even got a Puppet Master build that was really focused around illusion and conjuration but if you want to throw conjuration onto a stealth archer bound bow and then summons oh it's bound really bow cool. and sky the thing is in oblivion and, and that bound weapons they kind of just look like daedric weapons like actually like not even ethereal just plain mm. daedric gear but i really like obviously there should have been more variety in skyrim but i do really like you make a build i mean we have our first ever Skyrim build that still is on the channel because what happened is um, <laughs> we just saw people putting essentially their tags in the description. So we just did that to kind of like help the video grow and YouTube just deleted them all. I <laughs> said so that's yeah, the short of the it, big... but, but some didn't. So we have the arcane warrior there and he used ebony armor, one of the dragon priest hoods, um, but then an arcane, sorry, an ethereal battle axe, the bound yeah. battle axe. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Because yeah, you can feel like that execution of it, magic, you know? This is not quite... I, I think that actually, that thing that was stealth on the Ethereal Hunter build, which was like our sort of like werewolf -y kind of character, but then he also had like bound bow stuff. I think he also armor. used those, we, what we talked about in the previous video, those hounds that explode. Yeah, the familiars that yeah. Blow he was up. really like, yeah. It, it's cool, but, but stealth archer really gives you the, I would say like the most for a lot of people to, to go through and play. But if you don't want that sort of 
evil sort of if you're not interested in thieves guild or dark brotherhood and you just gonna don't worry about stealth mm -hmm. hands down that i think one of the better ways to go about it is the enchanted magically buffed warrior archetype oh yeah so you're talking alteration and restoration yeah. just makes you so overpowered and i remember enchanting. you had a an orc character in yeah. full daedric just with a daedric longsword kind of vibe and yeah. he used alteration because some of the things in skyrim is it's not just like the play style with the gear it's it's the perks mm. and alteration with all the mage armor and and well the biggest um, thing spell absorption sorry and things like that yeah like the biggest thing to, to start with and you can either pick heavy or light armor light armor the fact of the matter is it is statistically better with the stamina regen buffs and, and, and stuff like that and then you can still hit the armor rating cap anyway mm. but heavy armor does have a lot of cooler looking options i think but either one you pick early on when you're not like maxed out and smithing and enchanting and stuff you're not at the armor cap so things like ebony flesh and stuff like that still have yeah. like benefits to use before battle also to increase your alteration skill but once you get to the max of the the skill and you've got like say you've got maxed out armor rating on your armor because you've smithed it up and enchanted yeah, and whatnot yeah. you've still got the benefit of the master spell dragon hide which just cuts 80 percent of mm -hmm. all physical damage incoming but then on top of that with the 30%, the Atronarch perk, the 30% spell absorption, the 30% spell resistance that comes with it. And then easily you can just get like the Atronarch stone. And there's a few other things you can do to like buff up your spell absorption. You've got like spell absorption, magic resistance, then heaps of physical resistance. Yeah, you can just turn yourself into a magical tank with recovery sure. options because you've got all of the restoration stuff. Plus it gives you that like, I want to go into the Dawn Guard quest line as sort of a, um, like a paladin kind of thing. You can and even with enchanting, and just having that long sword that does, you know, chaos damage mixed with something else, it just can make you feel unique and you name that sword. It's mm. like that. I mean, battle mages provide for a very similar experience yeah. to obviously, you could call them both battle mages, but the one that we've been talking about so far is more of a warrior with an arcane flair. Whereas I view a battle mage as a very like 50-50 kind, of, yeah. kind of build. I think one of the funnest builds to play, and I'm sure you'll agree, is actually an extremely ideological build. It doesn't matter what their ideology is, but one of those like super, you know, you could be an extremely strong Stormcloak supporter or an extremely strong Empire supporter. Mm. And, you know, you essentially understand that you're playing in, in many ways a flawed character or a, a character with a very subjective view of the world. But it's fun because you can really get into it and you can kind of like, you know, playing uh, our Centurion build, for example, it's a sword and shield classic, you know, Roman inspired thing with the, the unique helmet. And you just run in with shield charge, like builds with block in Skyrim were, were quite fun. Yeah. Not only were they just OP kind of, they're just really strong. They also have shield charge and quick reflexes yeah which meant that if you block and then the slow-mo thing procs you could just spin behind enemies and like finish them off all of that stuff was there's like lot, there's really there's enjoyable they added in mounted combat basically all those builds that it would civil war builds were fun they're, they're kind mm. of they can be shorter lived playthroughs but they're often fun to just well, go through and, and take over the forts. And, and that's kind of what I was, uh, what we've been saying too about why picking that sort of magical enhanced warrior is really good because that is something that works, blends perfectly with Civil War kind of stuff. If you were to approach it as some sort of, you know, shamanistic sort of Stormcloak, char Stormcloak character who like, you know, likes the ancient ways of Janal, or you want to have some sort of imperial cult kind of battle mage who trained in the Arcane University and has now come to Skyrim to fight the Civil War kind of thing, you can have, it just fits very well. And that sort yeah. of magically enhanced warrior allows you to take advantage of little interesting spells and, and enchantments and stuff, which also make you quite versatile because you can increase, increase your two-handed damage. Also, if you really want to get, like, later in the game, you can start using it to, like, lower your destruction. So you can make your destruction cost free and then you can pursue destruction yeah, as well. Yeah, sure. But, like, it gives you so many role-playing opportunities because you're, you're approaching... You can approach pretty much every quest. It just basically cuts out the sort of, you know, Thieves Guild, Dark Brotherhood stuff. Yeah. Which I, is, like we said, stealth purchase. I think another extremely fun build, if I'm thinking of, like, the top fun builds, is the Pure Mage who is only interested in power. So this is a morally gray character who basically considers attaining knowledge and mastery the highest good or aim in their life. As we talked about in the Dark Elf video recently, that's the kind of thing you can often get with a Telvani themed character because that tends to be their philosophy of life anyway. But you can do it with any character. You can have a Breton, you know, make an mm. old Breton dude and all he cares about is becoming the strongest mage and, and getting power. So it means that when he comes to the Dawnguard DLC, he might think, hey, this is a way for me to be immortal and forever be a vampire. Mm. So he'll go and do that. 
and you can kind of pick the morally gray choices throughout the playthrough while also still being able to just do your normal kind of hero stuff because you're coming at it with this view of well this is going to make me more powerful even the main storyline if you mm. if you don't feel like playing it you don't have to but as a power hungry character you can role play well i'm going to learn the way of the voice sure i'll save skyrim from alduin but i just want to be able to you know fire breath people to a crisp or you know know how to become ethereal so i can jump off a cliff and survive and I think all this or, or slow time you know what was really cool builds that really abused the slow time thing before mm. they patched it early skyrim days I remember we had our first ever video on the channel was actually called the Necro Warp Enhancement. And it was a way to play a build where you abused slow time. You used the, um, what is it? The Necromage perk with being a vampire to like get buffs on all and your the skills. I think might've even been the Shrine of Talos as well. You, you use a few exploity kind of things, yeah. but what ends up happening is you get super slow time advantage and you then cast the Adept Ice spell I think it's um, Ice Storm. Yeah. And you just cast that because it moves slow and you run around. After they patched it, they made you slow and the world slow, but even slower. Originally, you were still pretty fast yeah, and the yeah. world was really slow. So you could run around, cast all of these ice, ice storms and they would all go around in a target around the thing. And then when time would unfreeze, yeah. they would all just fly around some, the map. You the, could take out an entire bandit fort from a distance to the by point just where, laying like, this trap. With archery, you could shoot an arrow and then kind of like, if you were quick, you could still walk around and like take it in mid- in Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, and, and, and I know um, with that old trick that we did, you could also... Um, kind of like use um shouts over and over and over again yeah i think it like you said the amulet and yeah because i think the dragon aspect was part of it which increased you use dragon and aspect and basically you as soon as your shout ran out you could pretty much just do another one yeah that it is was, a very <laughs> yeah, it was super it was op awesome. but we we were really trying to hit youtube i think you'd have a to unique to, play style to fix it to return it to what it was yeah because they updated and got rid of it but um speak what you were talking about too about getting um having a power hungry character and so on one important thing in general with skyrim and having the most fun with skyrim is generally making sure there are gameplay elements within it to actually support your role playing and so on so if yeah. you're going in for a power hungry sort of thing a is there's lots of justifications for all the different storylines and also getting like daedric artifacts and all that kind of power but the other thing is like think of things like um the whole dragonborn dlc and the black books and hermaeus mora's realm yeah. like the pursuit of knowledge and opening these ancient esoteric eldritch tomes and it comes out at you and they give you all of these cool special buffs and so on like that that is such a fun like one of my favorite characters that i've ever played was um uh, like a telvani wizard focused kind of character and that just was the Dragonborn DLC was perfect for that. And collecting the black books felt yeah. so cool. And you're just getting these... Yeah, it's just so Especially awesome. like some of the ways that they would alter shouts you already had or powers you already had. Like, you know, you being able to use unrelenting force and actually turn someone into dust, basically. Yeah. Things like that were really fun. I know there was the fireworm as well when you killed someone with fire breath. And a kind of ice wraith looking creature, but made of fire, would mm. come out. It wasn't that effective, that one, but it was just really cool. Yeah. And obviously you have all your tentacle kind of spells and Hermaeus more magic and speaking of daedric princes uh another one of the coolest builds obviously because daedric princes are so in-depth and interesting and one of the coolest parts of the elder scrolls universe you actually have a character that's just all about multiple or one daedra and just following them it kind of puts you into or forces you to learn the lore of the elder scrolls even more because you think okay this whole build has dedicated themselves to boethia I got to find out more about Boethia yeah. so that I can, you know, be true and, to that character. And I think even if you're actually a little intimidated by that idea, another way to do it in, in a similar sort of vein is using a cluster of gods. So if, for example, if you're, uh, you know, a Dark Elf character and you're into the Reclamations, Boethia Mephilo Zura gives you a little extra variety, but also, you know, it allows you to, it slims down the choices a bit. Or if you're playing, for example, a Reachman character, getting right into the, the Daedra that the Reachman worship mm -hmm. and so on. But following some sort of god or creed or in-law thing sure. is a really great way to just... Also, just a, a note for people watching the video in the background, when you see the uh, the no clothes characters, it's a Debella related thing. Because mm. this is the Winter Sun mod. And while this isn't in vanilla Skyrim, obviously, get it play it winner sun mod gives you the ability to worship a variety of deities i think it's like 51 or, or there's a huge list it's not just the daedric princes and the nine divines it's like all kinds of obscure gods like you know there's like riddle thar is a, an option for worship um yeah. 
There's like the old ways, like the Nordic old ways. You can worship the Magna Gear if you want to mm. and like levitate through meditation across the map. Like you're like praying and zooming around. It's just the mods obviously really take it to the next level and what you can what you can yeah. do and get out of Skyrim. Hundred percent. Yeah. I think um I think if we were trying to like condense what we've said into a smaller message it would be basically two really good playthroughs for effective builds but also lots of role-playing opportunities stealth archer if you do and maybe a little bit of magic if you want to go for that sort of like classic evilly sort of morally yeah. and if you want to be a kind of a, a good guy follow the dragonborn quest line do the dawn guard side of the dawn guard quest line um and you know companions college wind hold stuff like that a magically enhanced warrior with enchanting that to be honest that's probably if you want to give yourself like the most canon vibe experience for skyrim you want to be that kind of like classic dragonborn looking thing a magically enchanted warrior um with a bit of restoration mm -hmm. alteration i mean enchanting shouts. enchanting is so cool i remember the first time i was playing skyrim back in 2011 and you got to the enchanting table in white run and all i did was put a shock enchantment onto my sword using like a a petty soul gem even it was something like six mm. or eight damage but early on that really helps and i i just draw it out and the sparks actually fly on and it's kind of got those like runes kind of yeah. carved in with color the the look of it was just See, really we've, cool. we've talked on the channel before about how enchanting has created some like balance problems to the point where oh, effective builds are always basically come down to like you have to use enchanting in the long term to make a really good build but at the same time um enchanting coming into it does give you a lot of variety of what you you can do like you used mm -hmm. to be able to like absolutely glitch glitch smith the hell out of weapons but even without any sort of restoration potion glitch stuff you can absolutely smith up weapons you know make yourself an enchanting set with smithing yeah. then smith your weapons they've got huge damage output then you would you know enchant your gear with improved one-handed or whatever you can make that sort of sword that's a low level sword like for example in the recent with it with the snow elf but the ice blade of the monarch its damage is only equivalent to sort of steel with a claymore but once you sure. buff it up with all of the enchantments Enchanting, it actually becomes viable. I mean, it's got a cool enchantment mm. on top of it, which makes up for the lower damage. Yeah. But that that kind of that kind of system is just is is really great. However, at the same time, if Elder Scrolls Six comes out and enchanting is not as crazy OP, they could also just balance the game a little more. I, I think that the the best interest this is a little tangent, but for a for an Elder Scrolls Six game to to get the most out of it, I really think they should just go for make the most amount of playstyles viable as possible. Oh huh? yeah, for because because sure. it because rather than oh an enchanted warrior, I, I think is the I best. think the alternate start mod, some version of that in Elder Scrolls Six would really really help. Mm. I know that um, Starfield is is giving like you know that kind of character background stuff. If people respond well to that, it would be cool to see an Elder Scrolls Six where there is an alternate start. However. Bethesda do love their iconic Elder Scrolls game starts and their walkout moments and all this, which is fine. I mean, even if which they is just fine, had the, it's just... the background stuff, like you're saying, instead of like, if it's not in an yeah. entirely new start, it is just the, For the sure. traits. Although even that, even that, I wouldn't want to <sighs> be pigeonholed into like yeah. 10 possible backgrounds because the thing I like about the Elder Scrolls is being able to make a hundred or more backgrounds in my head mm. and play all kinds of But if, if they are like kind of like background traits that you only If they're more vague, that's Or vague right. sounding but, things, like yeah. kind of like professions or-, or Yeah, oh, I want traits. But Don't get me wrong, be, I want traits. It'd be so cool. I imagine like flipping through the 10 different races, but then there is also or like all of these different traits, but then there's like- two or three race specific traits so if you're like a wood elf there's like a trait that's like yeah you know green pact adherent or something like or, or that, if you're or, a khajiit one oh. of them is like kind of like skooma trafficker background kind yeah. of thing or like yeah oh man they could so do some cool. really some really cool yeah. stuff uh, i think yeah uh, more gameplay function to support some of the more niche role-playing ideas mm. would be really good more options to take guilds in in at least just two directions just two from each yeah. from just some even just that choice would be better than, you know, yeah. basically one choice for the most part. Because Skyrim obviously is a game where it's it's not choose which way the story goes, it's choose which stories you're going to do, what direction are you going to go in versus a branching one with multiple paths, right? Yeah. Like Fallout games tend to be more like that. Elder Scrolls games tend to be more like that. Um, but a mix of both would be good, like going out, but then pronged yeah. into two different options, obviously. If you can get the best of both worlds, why not? Do you have any other most fun builds um i don't think so i i, I think sometimes like, they're all mixed. archer i think <laughs> stealth archer overshadows going around with a dagger but i've actually had some of my most fun 
playing a stealth dagger playthrough. I had like this vampire. It's actually the origin well, for the that's vampire. That's actually it. Temptress vampire build. playthroughs are really fun. Yeah. Well, well, the origin for the vampire Temptress build, which was one of the OGs on the channel, and then we had to like redo uh -huh. it and so on, um, was my my character where it was like I was. Um, you know, going through puberty. So I thought tavern clothes were the, were the <laughs> best. So, um, but tavern clothes, um, I, I, like she was in tavern clothes and I think the Dark Brotherhood shrouded gloves, the ones that aren't armored and so on. So she was all in like just clothing. But um, I had it, I was using the Mayrun's razor, but the stealth, because you know, remember that little glitch where if you stealth just in front of them. Oh, with the shadow mastery. What yeah, master? shadow master. At the end of the sneak tree. Perk. I always forget because I'm so used to modded perks. Shadow yeah. warrior. Yeah, right. that one. But doing you, that you little you crouch, and the second yeah. you crouch, you become invisible. But there was this, there's a split second where you're undetected. Mm. So you could be facing someone and just hit sneak and then attack, and basically you would instantly get like yeah. a finisher move on them with the dagger. Well, the, the you get the multiplier off the yeah, and it becomes the, 15 times the damage, which is awesome. And yeah. the, the point there, and also you can kind of look like that was like a seductive vampire character who was just had a little dagger and that was all she killed with. But the, um, the the point there is that while the stealth archer is like one of the more effective or like powerful kind of things, I never felt cooler than stealthily going through like a dungeon or like all of this area mm -hmm. or Valheim ta Towers and like, I don't know, cutting someone's neck and then they like drop off the edge and you just feel so cool as opposed to... Yeah. Stealth archer can feel cool too, but it's a little bit like easy sometimes. You can just go pot shot. Well, like, that's one of the cool things about them still is, is, the, is the kind of, you know, the ragdoll mechanics of like if you're going through... Um, is it it's Broken Ore Grotto, I think, where you go for the Lights Out quest. Yeah. Anyway, where you go to kill yeah. the Argonian who got you to switch off the lighthouse. And then there's guards everywhere, but a lot of them are standing over the edge of like water or big mm. rocks or wooden bridges that have high eleva elevation. Mm. And when you shoot them, they'll go over the edge and the camera follows them down. I think I, I think too. Like, I think, Good stuff. I think to like end on is, is something to say is Skyrim isn't a particularly hard game from level zero to about 50. You're not going to really run into any sort of problems. Once you start getting over 50, things start getting a little bit more overpowered and you might need to like effectiveness might be a lot more important. But yeah, to be honest, you can get away with a lot. And there, there are so many builds that we haven't mentioned that are just so fun to play, but mm. just in the interest of hitting the main points. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think we've done a solid job. One thing that I really want to do is actually get our old Xbox 360s, dig them out, dust them off, <laughs> and plug yeah. them in if we can, and show you all show you some our premium. first ever Skyrim builds. The Skyrim builds you've never seen. Our personal playthroughs from 2011. <laughs> you also, See how terrible they're built. Also how like they look. Like even just the <laughs> Xbox 360. Like you, your eyes adjust now to like special edition. I sometimes look at like Xbox 360 Skyrim and I'm like, this looks like a PS2 game. It actually looks worse than just your 2011 Skyrim on a PC with a good graphics card. Yeah. Like it actually is... Yeah, a much it's, uh, worse looking game. It's ancient stuff. But yeah, but it'd be really time. fun to dig it up and, and show everyone. Yeah. Let us know if you want to see that in the comments below. But I think that brings us to the end. If if you want, we could actually do like a really well thought out ranked list. So let us know of like fun yeah. builds, like really specific, like this one's better than this. And I'll argue with you and play devil's advocate and we'll string something together. But yeah, thanks Sounds for tuning in. You can follow us on Twitter using the links in the description or go watch this Winter Sun video because Winter Sun's just awesome and you will 100% get inspired yeah. to play it. If you uh, have to install, if you're going to install one mod for like role playing and even like the gameplay part of it, it's definitely Winter, Winter Sun's Sun. great. It's the best one. Yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.